Hey guys, actually had a gorgeous Saturday morning, so I've decided to do the oil change on the Cub today. The ground's still pretty yucky, so um, I'm going to opt to do the oil filter first. And if it's anything like my last Cub, the first oil change was a nightmare because the oil filter and the drain plug were ridiculously tight. So hopefully I can get it off. I don't care how bad it gets beat up as long as I can get it off. Um, to get to the oil filter, pull your seat out and then pull that big plastic cover under the seat. And the oil filter is on the passenger side. So I'm going to get a rag down there and hopefully you all can see this. I'm probably going to be all in your way. But I just can't get a better angle with the video camera. So let's see how this works out. I'm going to try and do something different with this because I know for a fact I'm blocking this completely. And there's my rooster. Been crowing for the last, I don't know, seven months. Let's see how that works out. Okay, and this is the oil filter right here, and it's not in a very good spot to begin with. So, I have a cup which fits the new filter, but I'll never put it on tight enough to probably need that. And I have this expansion tool also, but because of how close it is to the block and the starter, I don't think this is going to work. However, we are going to give it a shot first. Yeah, there's no getting that in there. So, what I really didn't want to do was use this oil filter last resort wrench. Oh, and I should mention, I have a rag down here to catch the oil that's bound to spill out of the filter. Just to prevent most of it from running down the side of the block. So what we're going to do as a last resort is I'm going to try and bang this other cup over the oil filter using a, uh, a persuading tool. I'll be right back. Alright man, I've tried everything. Even channel locks, a strap, and this thing does not want to cooperate. So what I'm going to do now, I do not recommend doing the oil filter adapter on this is actually part of the block on a lot of applications the oil filter adapter is replaceable but it is not replaceable on this particular engine and I have every intent of changing this oil filter if I have to tear the engine out lay it on its side to do it so I'm gonna take a long screwdriver and I'm going to try and make a dent in the lip of the filter. And then I'm going to try and use that dent as leverage to turn it by hitting it. And if this doesn't work, I very well may have to yank the engine out. You can't get a good angle at it because the air filter housing is in the way. This is annoying. I mean terribly annoying. Can you believe how tight this filter is? Because I can't. This is tighter than the other challenger I had and that thing didn't budge and 
won't be long. I'm going to puncture the filter and then I'm going to be totally committed. That's starting to move finally. Well, I'd be willing to bet that they put the filter on dry in that they don't lube up the gasket. And that's probably part of this issue. And yeah, we have a hole in the filter now. So now we're in knee deep. They should be shot for this. Maybe now it'll spin out by hand. Yeah, right. Yeah, I guarantee that that gasket is dry. Thank God. Not that the gasket is dry, but I finally got it. And this oil change is due way before they recommend it. But, and you can't tell if the filter gasket was dry or not because the oil leaks all over it as you're spinning it out. So, all right, we didn't hurt the housing, which is a good thing. So now something about these filters that I think is worth mentioning is the gasket. If you look at the O-ring, it's rounded. When I changed oil for the first time on my other one, the gasket was flat on top and it leaked like a sieve. So I recommend making sure you get a filter with the correct gasket. So now we're going to grab the new one and put that on. Okay, so here's the new filter, and that's the part number that fits my uh, 750 China. So I'm going to lube up this new gasket. I will never have it on as tight as they did, so I won't go through that again. But you just want to get that slicked up pretty good so that you don't have to worry about it adhering to the aluminum housing when you tighten it up. And thankfully the cup that I have does fit this anyway. And one thing you want to make certain of as well is that the old gasket from the old filter doesn't stay stuck to the um, to the engine because that thing will leak like a water fountain if you don't catch it and you start it. All right, now we're gonna grab the cup and the ratchet. Yeah, if this would have fit on the other one, I may have been okay. And there's no need to tighten these things down crazy tight. Okay, that's as tight as I'm going with this. And now we'll get into the um, drain plug, see how that treats me. Okay, so now we're under the machine and the drain plug access in the skid plates is located just about in the center of the uh, of the machine and it's easily identifiable because it's a big round hole that's the drain plug and it's a 19 millimeter so let's see how easy this is to get out and I really don't know if I'm gonna be able to place the camera under here 
I really, really recommend using a six point socket because if this is going to be ridiculously tight, you don't want to round this off. Huh, I'm impressed. It wasn't really, it was actually where it should be as far as tightness goes. And I should also state that I, um, I let the engine run about three or four minutes just to warm up the oil. I'm going to let this drain for a while to get as much of the old oil out as I can. But I'm going to find where that thing splashed in here. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little strainer in here. I'd clean that out, make sure it's very clean and dry before I put it back together. Okay, so now I'm going to clean out this um, screen and the drain plug real quick with some carburetor cleaner. And I looked at it, there was nothing in there really, but it just makes me feel better. And when this goes back together, it goes this way. The bare spring inside of the um, drain plug cup and the strainer on the top side. So... The machine's, <clears throat> excuse me, the machine's been draining for about 15 or 20 minutes, and that's good enough for me. So I'm going to let this piece here dry out for a bit, and then I'm going to reassemble. And I should mention, too, that I am going to put a little bit of oil on this rubber O-ring that is um, on the drain plug. Okay, everything's dried up. I lubed up the... Um the o-ring on the drain plug so now we're gonna put this back together and since it's spring-loaded now it does take a little bit of effort to get the drain plug started again it feels like somebody's got their hand in there pushing back on you and you know what it's I'm gonna move my drain pan in case I drop it, I don't want to drop it in the bucket of dirty oil. And this whole drain plug is aluminum, so you really got to be careful when you're taking this out, because it will damage easy. And you definitely don't want to cross thread it. Well, that took more effort than I really wanted to put into it. And I recommend making sure you can tighten it up most of the way by hand to ensure that it's not cross threaded. Any mistake could be expensive. And then we're going to snug that back down. And this doesn't have to be very tight either. I don't know what the torque specs are on this, but we're just going to snug it up. And that'll be that. Now we're going to put oil back in it. Okay, so now we're going to put the oil back in, and the oil fill is basically the same as the dipstick. And um, that turns threads in. I have a transmission funnel here to try and make things as easy as possible. But I'm telling you, man, this, this setup here is really not, how shall I say, oil change friendly. So let me grab the oil. Now this is going to take a little over two quarts. And I was going to use the Rotella, but I need to change the oil in my Dodge as well. So I went to the store to buy some and they only had um, 10 quarts. And I need more than that to change the oil in my truck. So I have to save what I had left for the truck. But what I am using is a Castrol GTX 2050. And I know the recommendation here for summertime is going to be 2040. But 
this isn't going to hurt it. Okay, the oil is in it. And it's my understanding to get an accurate reading on the dipstick, you need to screw it all the way down and then unscrew it and check the oil level. So this took just a little over two and a quarter quarts. Um, that's overfilled on the stick, but we've yet to start it to fill the oil filter. So we're going to start it. And two things I like to do right after an oil change is one, clean up any spilled oil in case you do have a leak you'll be able to see it a lot easier than wondering if that's oil you spilled or if that's leaking oil. And two is, I don't like to just start the engine and let it run with an empty oil filter. If that oil filter wasn't sitting sideways, I'd have filled it before I put it on the engine. But unfortunately, I can't do that in this case. So, a lot of cars have what they call a clear flood mode. If you hold the throttle all the way to the floor, it won't start because it shuts the injectors off. And you can crank it a little bit, rest it, crank it a little bit, crank it, and let the oil fill the filter before you start it. But I tested that out on this machine, being it's fuel injected, I thought maybe, but that doesn't have this feature. So I'm just going to start it, let it run for a second, shut it off, start it, let it run for a second, shut it off. Just to let that filter get filled. With an empty filter, your oil pressure tends to be zero or very low, and that's a bad thing. One more time, then we're going to run it and check for leaks. Okay, so it's um, it's finished, took it for a little blast, double checked for leaks, everything's good to go, the oil level is good, and it did take just a little over two and a half quarts with the filter change. One thing I thought was worth pointing out, and I honestly didn't notice this until just now, is there's no oil warning on, on the dash with the engine off. Now right here, there is the little oil spout thing, but notice it does the light test and it goes right out. So I'm going to have to research that and find out if that's a pressure or a level gauge. It, I, I can't imagine that there's no way the dash can tell you or cannot tell you that you don't have any oil pressure even if it is full. So that's a little unnerving quite honestly and if it turns out that I find out it's just a level I'll probably put a mechanical gauge in it and um, yeah I don't like this at all that there's no low oil pressure warning unless something flashes on on the the cluster here but I don't I don't know I'm gonna have to research that and I'll let y'all know but anyway this is probably the worst oil change I've ever done and I've done a zillion oil changes on everything tractors dozers cars trucks side-by-sides motorcycles and this was terrible next time it'll be easier because the filter isn't crazy glued on but um, anyway if you stuck it out through this whole mess I appreciate it you guys have a great weekend and uh, oh I may do a smoked chicken tomorrow an entire chicken so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, watch out for that video. All right, you guys, take care and talk soon. Oh, wow, ladybug.